Hello from Gardening at Duenza in Ireland and this is a follow-up video on my sick orchid here it is here and what I've been doing with it. Now this orchid had been in the greenhouse uh, during the summer and I was away on holidays for the final two weeks in August so the temperatures actually dropped lower than they should and the poor Cattleya collection was subjected to nighttime temperatures that were below 10 degrees. Now when I got back everything seemed okay except for a little bit of rot on one particular Cattleya which I'll show you in a minute and a second Cattleya, my CG rubbling, that had markings on its leaves. But now, which is six to eight weeks later, I did discover some strange stuff on this particular Cattleya and that's what I covered in the last video. Now, I think what happened was that my plants suffered some kind of mesophyll cell collapse due to the low temperatures, which is meant to manifest six to eight weeks afterwards. And then an opportunistic rot managed to get in because I, this particular plant here, I've done some cutting since you last saw it. And you can see here that this leaf has been cut off and some cinnamon applied. And if we look down here, I wonder, can we see? I've cut off a complete pseudobulb here and put some cinnamon on the top. And what did I find when I started cutting this pseudobulb down and down and down? Well, I'll show you. So that looked to me like a rot that was running down the inside of the pseudobulb at its core, the brown bit going down the middle like you saw in the photograph. And I cut down to below where that was visible at all till I just got green in the pseudobulb, which meant going quite low. Now I hope I've um, come to grips with the problem and gotten rid of the rot because um, the alternative is to do a whole big production on it, a whole big job with hydrogen peroxide. Now I'm going to refer you here to a video by Miss Orchid Girl, who recently quite, did quite a comprehensive thing on how to deal with rots using hydrogen peroxide. The link is going up above. And um, the reason why I didn't use hydrogen peroxide is, well, it's really, really expensive here in Ireland. So I've done this measure and hopefully that'll be enough. So if you suspect anything infectious or contagious among your collection, then you know what you have to do. No, I hear you say, not watering separately. Oh yes, I've had to start watering each plant separately. So this is the way I'm watering my orchids now that, uh, well, I have a potential bacterial rot going around. And that means I'm watering each one separately. And this orchid here is a Cattleya. It's the one that I had a rot on earlier on in the season. And I'll just show you how it's doing. I'm trying to find the spot where I found the rot. Yeah, here it is. Look. See where I cut just on the leaf, the leaf beyond the sheath, there was some kind of bacterial black rot on there and I cut below it and applied cinnamon and fingers crossed this plant seems okay. So I'm lucky I've access to copious amounts of rainwater and in winter there are only being used to water the greenhouse so I can use them for my orchids. So I fill up a bucket with rainwater and then I put the feed in here, the Akern rain mix and the Epsom salts as I showed in a previous video. And then what I do is I fill up one of these jugs with um, just well as much water as I can and I put it in the microwave just to warm it slightly because this rainwater is very cold. So in the water goes to the microwave and um, just say two minutes to take the chill off. So I put about half a litre of that water into a separate jug and it's nice and warm now and it has the feed in and I'm going to use this to water this particular orchid. Now what I use is a small bowl here and I put the orchid over the bowl like that 
and then just pour the water through. Now, I'm a great believer in pouring water through the top of orchids. I know there's a lot of talk nowadays about leaving orchids to sit in water for 10 minutes or whatever, and then, um, you know, I'm not bothering to pour them through the top, but um, I think I'm probably just a bit old school. So I'm reusing this water to flush through the plant again and again, being as careful as I can not to get the water on any new growths. So I just do this for a few minutes and it's quicker than leaving the whole plant to sit in water for 10 minutes. You know, I've got over 150 orchids, so anything that saves time is good for me, really. So once I've done that for a little while, then I lift the orchid out and drain it by putting it over on the sink with the other ones. And then, this breaks my heart, I tip out the water in the sink so that it doesn't get used for anything else. And I give the bowl a little rinse out with just tap water and the jug a little rinse out with tap water. And then continue the same process on the next plant. So that's how I'm watering my orchids at the moment and uh, it's made me very grumpy. Grrr because I'm having to use three to four times as much water and it's certainly adding time to the length of time that it takes to actually tend to the plants. Uh, so I hope I can address this problem and revert to form, let's say, to how I did it before uh, by the time summer comes along. Anyway, that's my video on how I'm temporarily watering my orchids to guard against uh, rots and any other kind of infection that my collection might currently have. Thanks very much for watching and bye now.